And here we have another project. This is a Clousing. A Clousing, I believe it's a 4002. It's a uh, 7 inch, I think it's a 7, 7 by 18 um, surface grinder. I mean, it's been it's been out here getting a little patina of rust on it, but the uh, the ways are in the ways and bearings are in superb shape. This will take a little more than cleaning and reassembly to uh, get it into fine working order. I I didn't want to make a whole big video on this, but it's it's a significant event I guess going on here, so we're gonna uh, film some of it. Um, I uh, got a surface grinder. It's a Clousing 4002 uh, 6x12 and I, I'm, I'm told it'll do 7x13 or so, you know, if you push it. Um, the, uh, the ways are in really, really nice shape. The whole machine is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, but it was filthy. It was absolutely covered in gunk and uh, so I've dismantled it um, because it's e a lot easier to move especially when you're a one-man band as am I so here is the uh, I, I guess we'd call this the saddle yeah I'd say this is the saddle it's the piece between the base and the table um, so this has been cleaned and it's ready for repaint. Here's the uh, here's the the uh, vertical tower. What do you what do they call this piece? I'm sure there's a name for it. This is the spindle. The spindle's in very nice shape. And uh, I need some more wheel arbors. That's for sure. I have one wheel arbor that came with the machine, and that's it. And finally, over here we have the base, um, or the uh, the lower. I guess the lower unit. This has not been cleaned yet, and you can see it's it's pretty filthy. It's pretty dirty. Um, but again, the ways are in excellent shape, and it's just really surface dirt for the most part. Whatever they use, whatever kind of solvent or uh, whatever kind of um, coolant they used really did a number on the paint and the base unit here which has been repainted all of the paint came off of that it was it was basically just held on by capillary action there was there was the paint had completely uh separated the primer and everything had pretty much completely separated from the metal so uh, that's all been uh, cleaned and repainted, and we're about to repaint this. And uh, once we start getting it back together, we'll set up the camera and the lights and and uh, show you it going back together and doing the alignments. And hopefully that'll be sooner than later. Okay, so the base has been... There's the saddle. It's uh, It's all been cleaned up and repainted. That's the, we're looking at the bottom of the salad, S uh, salad, <laughs> saddle, um, and uh, the the entire base unit and pedestal have been cleaned and, and repainted, and this is where the column sits, and this has been scraped, and the reason why I scraped it, it really wasn't, it really was just a machine surface for the most part, um, but the reason why I scraped it is because it got a little dinged up. Uh, I don't know why or how, but uh, certainly some of the uh, the edges of these holes were, were a little raised. And it had a shim across the front. I'll probably put that shim back in. I assume it needs it. But we'll, we'll, set, we'll set the column and we'll test it for, uh, for squareness. Um, but I did. Uh, I did just clean this up. I took a little bit off. Took all little dents and dings out of it. There were there were a few dents and dings here and there, and uh, and it looks nice. I will probably. I will not scrape these ways. These are pretty clean under here. Um, I don't think they need it. I'll clean them up. Um, 
I might stone him. I'd probably just touch him with a stone just in case there's a little bar or a corner or something raised to make sure they're clean and nothing's gotten embedded in them because that, that happens. And uh, over here is the column. The column is uh, being cleaned. It will probably get painted tomorrow if the weather is favorable. Uh, it's pretty clean now. All the ways have been been uh, brushed out and scotch brighted and that's pretty good and the um, the spindle guide let's see the spindle guide is actually out here this just got painted today so this is the piece that slides up and down inside the column and then all of the uh, all of the keepers they're uh, steel keepers and, and a gib um, that hold this in, they'll all get scotch brighted and done. So, so that's where we are on that. The one thing I, I was not able to determine, or at least I wasn't from the various websites that I looked at, was uh, what, what type of wheel adapters I need. Um, I didn't see anything listed specifically for the 4002. Um, I did see a couple of spindles that looked like they should fit, um, but looked like or seems like or you know is it a, is there a standard? I'm not that familiar with surface grinders to know if there is a, 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 a standard wheel adapter. It doesn't appear to be, um, but they do do say uh, I have read that a lot of the surface grinders do use a common wheel adapter type. So. So that's the one thing I am lacking. I, you know, obviously, you, using a surface grinder, you, you need you need to have a couple of wheels, at least probably three wheels, um, for different jobs. Okay, <clears throat> now I haven't filmed much at all of this uh, up to this point, but we're getting we're getting down to the final few critical components here. We're going to try to get the column painted and mounted on this base today and start putting some of the small parts in. And It's out the door. So we'll see what the weather does. I may, I may paint inside. Okay, so that's it for the the process of painting. Uh, that's basically what I've done for every one of these pieces, from the from the base to the stand to the to the you know the 
bottom half of the unit and everything else, you know, clean, scrape, brush, whatever, paint, and uh, they try to just eliminate all those, you know, massive boring parts, hours of scrubbing and wire brushing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do recommend the method that I used was I hung it and I sprayed it down, let it sit, brushed it, sprayed it down again. Um, even on some of the larger pieces, I really went, really went through more than, than, than what this spray bottle holds on a, on a piece, which was a lot of, and this is clean solvent. There's no oil in this. This is absolutely clean, used virgin solvent. And uh, I bought five gallons for this job, and I haven't even opened it. I, I, I went through about a gallon. So I, this is the first time I actually tried that method of cleaning. Usually I just throw it in a tank and wash and wash. And you know, solvent gets oily and brown, and and then you use a little bit of clean solvent to do a final final wash or final rinse. But this really saved me a lot of solvent just using this spray method. And uh, you know, it didn't seem to require any more elbow grease than any other method. So there you go. <clears throat> so that's painted. I will uh, I will get a coat of uh, top coat on there, which is a. Uh, uh, now you may be interested in this. Um, I don't have. Do I have an old piece? Yeah, it's too discolored. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. Um. So this is more or less the original color. Hope that's focusing. Uh, it's it's a, I guess it's a light machine gray, and this is the paint that I picked up at. Uh, this is a Rust-Oleum. Rust it's a Rust-Oleum product, and if you, I tell you, if were it not for the dirt and staining and aging. On this paint, I think these are the, almost the same color paint because when I spray this on, it looks pretty darn good. This is a uh, Rust-Oleum Light Machine Gray, right there. Rust-Oleum Light Machine Gray, and I'm not a big fan of gray, but that's the color this machine was, and the paint wasn't too bad, so I really uh, I like the color. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the column in place, and uh, we've bolted it down. So there's there's one bolt in the rear, or, or, or rather two bolts in the rear, and then two come up from in the inside, and. Uh, Two forward ones come up from the inside. There is a 4,000 shim under the rear of the column that I did put back, and I've got this uh, this main bearing for the uh, for the spindle spindle height uh, all in place. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, probably wait for the oil. Uh, where's the oil? There's the oiler. It's an old <coughs> bijar. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Lastly, let's see if I can find the piece. This is my uh, this is my adapter. Um, I guess it goes up to about three quarters or one inch wheel thickness I believe that's an inch and a quarter inch and a quarter diameter on the uh, mount there 
and it's about a, a one inch to a one inch to five eighths bore on the taper. Is that a standard, or is that even a, a common um, spindle adapter, wheel adapter? I'd like to get a few of these, and I don't want to pay two hundred fifty dollars a piece for them. But uh, like I said, I have not been able to find a part number specific to the Clausing Model 4002. Maybe it doesn't matter. Anyway, once again, uh, any help that some of you can provide would be much appreciated. Well, as promised, we have a package, like Christmas. Um, I believe I see. I'm opening a package on, on camera. This is like stupid, right? Um, I'm astonished at the number of videos <laughs> on, on the internet, primarily YouTube, of people unboxing things. Here's what I got in the mail. And they open the package and they take every little piece out and and that's it. That's that's the end of the video. <laughs> okay. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. I thought I may have ordered something else. But this is the important part. Way oil. Mobile Vector 2. And what's way oil without an oiler? So let's get this bolted on. Every junction, no, not quite every junction. There is a, uh, there we go. We've got oil. There should be a metering, uh, a metering orifice with a filter before every. every delivery location so uh, now in lieu of having a manual there is a <clears throat> there is a uh, bronze on the other end of this shaft I, I could actually just pull it out and show you Okay, this is the. Make sure I got a shot here. This is the um, the uh, bevel gear which drives the height of the column head, and this is just a bushing um, 
on here and I don't see any way for this bushing to get oil in operation there is an oil delivery to uh, to the Acme thread that raises and lowers the head but there's no oil delivery for that bushing which is all the way in the middle of the machine so I've simply greased it up there we go Okay, so that goes in there. And that's fully meshed. Now, there's a set of, there's a pretty complete set of thrust bearings here for both this shaft and the bearings on the on the saddle um, and uh, this this you know this, the saddle bearings are are out here and uh, it's just a threaded bushing here in the front of the machine so I've got two sets of I've got four sets of bearings actually uh, to both push and pull and the the mesh or the uh, the back lash for this bevel gear is well slightly adjustable um, I cannot absolutely get the play out of it I cannot I cannot seat that bevel gear so that there is no play between the two bevels um, but I do have to get the I do have to get the play out of the these bearings which will be in here so there'll be a stack of bearings on this side and a stack of bearings on this side and this also has a bushing as well as thrust bearings and an oil fitting this is this is oiled from from the pressure oiler and so this will have to be set as well as the pressure on the thrust bearings and the, the clearance between the wheel and this um, these two thousand uh, two tenth graduations on on this wheel here so in lieu of having a manual to prescribe how all of those all of those locations are going to be set I'm pretty much I'm pretty much just gonna wing it I think I can figure that out pretty well
back to this project. So, I believe where we left off, we were discussing the, um, the bearings that I have in this box, which are the thrust bearings for the various control shafts. So we, as should be obvious, we've, we've gotten um, one of them in and we can now raise and lower this spindle height. And I'm lowering it all the way down now. So I've answered one of my questions. I um, remember I asked earlier, why would it be critical? Why would it be so important that this column be square to the table? And the answer is, it's really not critical that this column be square to the table. However, in this reassembling this, I uh, came to the conclusion that it is critical that this column be parallel to this jack screw, which is lifting the spindle up and down in these ways. This screw, or the axis of this screw, needs to be parallel to these ways in both X and Y so that it doesn't bind. So that is probably why there are four thousandths uh, uh, worth of brass shim in the back of this column. I haven't measured that, but I'm assuming that to be the case. Um, the error would be most critical when the column is down low. Um, so um, this column is in place but it's not tightened. I have not yet tightened this column to the base. I've snugged them up, you know, I've taken the clearance out of them but they're not tight. So this column can still be repositioned slightly and I'll show you why I did that in a moment. So this is going to be a, this is going to be an important step here which I'm, I'm going to video for you. And this is going to be a reinstalling the spindle carrier in here, which means setting all of these ways. Now, these red strips here are two thousandths inch spacers. We had four thousandths on this side, we had two thousandths on this side. I'm going to put it back together that way and we'll figure out what's going on. We're going to take some measurements. I have a new inside mic that uh, I just acquired and uh, so we're going to take some measurements in here we're going to take some uh, measurements on on this on these uh, on these ways I guess you call them um, take some measurements in here I'm assuming that since these shims are of plastic that there's probably some give in them I can probably you know, tighten them up, you know, plus or minus uh, thousands maybe, either way. Um, yeah, my keeper's cleaned up. I'm going to take my gloves off. Um, well, partly because this is getting to be a pretty clean operation at this point. But moreover, I need to know... Those are nice 9 mil nitro gloves. They're a little thick, but they hold up well. Um, I need to know that my surfaces are clean. So, I'm going to start with this keeper. This has been all cleaned up. I've scraped out the grooves that the dust covers travel in. And it just, uh, it worked out really nice that a hundred thousandths uh, parting tool 
slides down those uh, slides down those grooves rather nicely, and I was able to clean them up. And this is these. Uh, there was some paint on some parts of this. They they did. They weren't all painted, but there was a little paint on the outer edges here. So I've cleaned them all up so they're all nice shiny steel, which I like the look of. And they will not be getting any more paint. So now, I can feel that that's nice and clean. And we're going to start inches on there right now. No, nothing much to speak of. And let's, uh, let's get to see if I can get a reading on this. Okay, it looks like I can go to about 5, 10, 15, 22, 21, 22 under. So I can, I can go to about 980 or so here. Yeah, what are we at? Huh. Looks like we're about one inch three. So, this measured about, you no, know, 998 to 1, maybe a half thou over 1, and this is measuring about 103. So, we're looking roughly 2 to 4 thousandths clearance on this way, and it's not tight yet. Let me go up top, see if it's any different. Uh, it's 05, 105. I might have it in there a little tight. Yeah, 
105, a little under 105, just a hair. Let's see what we got over here. Too. So, uh, I would say this is pretty snug. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up to uh, about 15 foot-pounds. Now you may wonder, <laughs> How do I know it's 15 foot-pounds? Well, I'm proud to tell you that after a lot of many years of wrenching, I've gotten pretty good at, at knowing forks. Especially if I'm working at a, a length that I'm familiar with. This is about 10 inches, so your average ratchet handle. And I can usually, I can usually hit the mark plus or minus 10 percent. I mean, I could easily go grab a torque wrench, but I don't think it's that critical. In fact, I'm more concerned about pulling the threads so you get a raised area around the hole. When you, when you pull the thread, pull, you tug on the thread, you'll get a, a raised area on the hole. And it won't mate, it won't sit evenly. Um, it'll be sitting, it'll be sitting on a, on a raised area where, where the bolt goes through rather than sitting on the area between the bolts. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, tightening, uh, over tightening can work against you. You can see this clearance increase if you keep tightening sometimes because it's pulling material up out of the structure below and it's actually moving things away. Uh, all right. So now that I got that done, I'll put this back in its box. But well, I'm going to measure it again. Let's measure it again. I torqued it. Let's see if I got if I've got any difference here. I believe this was about 105 up here. I'm still at, I'm I I half a thou. I lost half a thou there. This was about 102. Now 104. I wonder if I just have to hit a high spot. Yeah, 104. Look at this side. One oh two. Now remember, this had four thousandths worth of shims on it. This had two thousandths worth of shims on it, and that's what they're showing: four and two. I don't know. 
pretty well machined piece of gear, you ask me. <clears throat> My nice analog digital Mitsu Toyo. Um, you know who I believe likes these? Mr. Pete. I like them too. I like things that don't need batteries. There's a drip line here at the, at the top, an oil drip. And it drips, this is the very top of the slide, it drips into a hole, runs down a little trowel, and then is distributed side, front, and back. Um, so if the machine is not vertical, if, you, if your, your carrier is down low here, and your machine is not vertical, you're liable to miss that little cup. Oil's not going to go where you need it. Now, I put wheels on this. Let me show you this. Because the shop is so tight here, I put wheels on this machine. And the uh, this is fairly thin sheet steel here. It is reinforced. There is a piece of iron right here uh, going across the whole machine. But you, I, don't, I don't think you can notice it on the camera. But there is a slight angle there. That is not parallel to the ground. So there's a little flexion going on right here. So to eliminate that, I, I'm going to be putting a, a piece of uh, uh, plate steel from, from this bracket all the way across to the, its mating bracket on the other side. And of course the spacing of those holes will be such that it will bring these, it will pull these two brackets together and get them parallel. So I'm going to use a piece of 3 8 of uh, flat steel. And then I'm going to add another piece of 3 8 just as a spacer to raise this angle bracket up a quarter of an inch and that will exactly level this machine. Right now this machine is a three quarters of an inch low in the rear. Um, but I thought that was a, a pretty nifty thing to do. The front wheels, the front wheels lock. Um, so I, I should be able to rock the table back and forth without any, any problem.
Let me bring you in real close on this. I don't like these kinds of uh, I really don't like these kinds of gibs screw gibs I never seem to they never seem to feel right and they never seem to stay where I want them I like the wedge type gibs so what I'm doing is I've tightened this up a lot with the everything in place squeezed all the oil out and I just and then I loosen it up take it off back it up you know a little bit back them all up a little bit just enough so that they they draw the oil back in they get that capillary action and you move move it up and down or whatever okay so now you've got all the mechanical positioning kind of slop taken out and spring in the give and all that kind of thing so now it's pretty reliable it'll go back to this position so at this point I should be just when I feel it start to resist I'm pushing on oil if I keep going I'm gonna squeeze that oil out and I'm gonna be steel on steel which I don't want okay so let that oil come back in there you can crank this up and down a little bit if you want okay and there it is, right, right back to that spot. So right about there is there's some oil. So then, get my nut ready. Drop my wrench. It's important to drop the wrench. There's a requisite number of times, but you can never find it in the book. Um, okay. So, just till I feel a little resistance, take out the backlash, and then go a tiny bit more, just a tiny bit, and tighten the nut there. Okay. So I know, no matter what, I've got steel, oil, steel. There's no way I'm going to have steel and steel with that setting. I can make it tighter. I could make it looser, but there's really no point. But there will be a film of oil in there, and they're, they're all set that way. And I kind of go back and forth and back and forth. I, you, you see, I did that about three times. So, if it's too loose, we'll go back and we'll tighten it. On a, on a cross slide, on like the Craftsman Vice and stuff like that with, the, with these things, yeah, you'll, you'll play with it for a week or two before you get it to where you like it. Um, in this application, I mean, it's a big one inch piece. I mean, it, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But it moves freely. When I put my hand here, I think I feel what feels like a little grit in the bearings on that lead screw. I'm going to bring this all the way down now. And I'm going to go in, I think I need a bigger wrench though. Yeah, I think I need a slightly bigger wrench. A lot of times when I find myself in these situations where there's no clear documented method procedure or YouTube video or whatever, I, I, I find myself asking myself, hmm, what would Robert Renzetti do? Or Tom Lipton. What would Tom, how would Tom Lipton do this? <laughs> ah, two guys always come up with some nice, clever techniques. Okay, so now, this is all bolted in place. It's not going to move. I'm going to do my final setting of this lift block at the top of the... Uh, I would you call it a jack screw? It's a lead screw. Okay, okay so that's it's free to move a little bit. I can wiggle it around. Okay. Just kind of let it 
let it find its seek its own position. Push up on it a little bit. And I'm going to tighten this because if there's any misalignment between the uh, axis of the lead screw and ouch and the travel of the carrier, it's going to be worse. The binding, the binding uh, movement will, will be worse when it's all the way down. But I don't think that's the case. It, it, it feels like it's, it's, it's got room to float at this position, left and right. I really could put these in. Well, there you go. I think that's more than enough. For one video. That's the whole carrier. With the exception of the drive motor and the the back dust panel, that column is done. That whole column is has been reassembled. 